I'm Ken Parks. I'm the Vice President of Entertainment here at Knott's Berry Farm. And so it's my job to lead the team of designers and, uh, and creators, builders, scenic artists, technicians who bring Knott's Scary Farm to life. My name is John Cook. I am a haunted attraction designer for Knott's Scary Farm. Oh, my name is Daniel Miller. Uh, I will be here 19 years as a maze designer and a scenic designer. So I design mazes and like the Elvira show and stuff like that. I'm Gus Kruger. Uh, I'm one of the maze designers here at Knott's Berry Farm. I also do a lot of scenic design throughout the year. Well, I love that we're getting back into making the entire park the attraction. Uh, so as a haunt fan who's been coming since 1985, I'm thrilled that we're getting uh, back to uh, that and that we'll decor the park more and that there will be more of these opportunities for you to discover uh, things about the park. And then I'm really excited by Trick or Treat Lights Out. That is my favorite. I love Dark Ride, Pumpkin Eater. I think they're going to be fantastic. But Trick, uh, we, you know, it's up, it's operating, uh, you know, for us to go through and test it. And it's, it's it's, it is frightening. I'm not screamed. I'm not screamed in a haunt maze in over 20 years, and I, uh, you know, I've said a few things I probably shouldn't have in front of the staff. I couldn't control myself. It was fantastic. I'm excited for the year as a whole, just because I feel like it's an extremely solid year from start to finish. Um, I, I'm happy that we are now embracing the park even more and creating an entire, making the entire park uh, an attraction. Um, I'm really happy that we're doing the Halloween Hootenanny and the log ride. Um, just as a big fan uh, of, the ha of Halloween and all its festivities and its offerings, um, I think it's going to be the perfect embodiment of, of the Halloween season in that ride. Well, this year my baby is uh, Peter Pumpkin Eater. The actual name is uh, Pumpkin Eater, the maze. And uh, it's set in the, around the hollows, which is in Camp Spooky. And it is uh, it takes that classic story of... Uh, Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, had a wife but couldn't keep her, put her in a pumpkin shell and there he kept her very well. Uh, it takes that nursery rhyme and really twists it, makes it super dark and it's all, I did the research and it's all about murder and it's all about how um, this guy was, hated his wife and stuck her in the shell. I thought that's a really interesting, cool horror theme that we could really kind of use and utilize. So, um, I took that and then I applied it to sort of making him more of a supernatural character. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be really cool if he lived in a huge pumpkin that was rotting and filled with dead bodies? And one of my inspirations last year was when I was carving a pumpkin with my daughter and you cut the lid off and you do that initial reach in and you see all those guts in there that are just filled with seeds. It's so visceral. I wanted every guest to really experience Experience them. Experience the the, the the horror of that gross, moist thing. And we definitely put that in this in the maze. It, it's covered in pumpkin guts. You're gonna have to go through a couple things and go through that. Um, and it's just a fun, grotesque maze. This is my first my first year theming or uh, designing that that ride. Um, so I can't really speak to the past. Although I did do the set dressing for Sleepy Hollow, which is funny. But. Um, to me, I just wanted to look at the ride and see what I could do to add to it opposed to changing. So what I just came up with was each scene within the log ride become, revolves around some sort of a folklorish monster, whether it's Bigfoot or aliens or vampires, and kind of build, um, around, build those scenes around those monsters and then have it all accumulate at the end during the Hootenanny, which uh, the ride already follows a path to a Hootenanny, so now it's the Halloween Hootenanny. Personally, I'm excited. I'm, I'm in charge of the Red Barn this year, and I've really taken what we had last year and built that framework up. Uh, we, what we're trying to do with that is really turn it into a more urgency, a more, more urgency, that sounds terrible, but give more of a sense of urgency and really bring you into a real-life horror movie as opposed to a walk through a maze. So that's been a lot of fun to work on, uh, and we we're trying some new techniques really to, to break that comfort level of people. As far as the new mazes, I'm really excited to uh, experience Trick or Treat Lights Out. Um, what John has done with that maze, it's really cool. I actually haven't been able to go through it with just a flashlight yet, but I'm really looking forward to that one. We want to look at everything that we do that we plus it. You know, even if it's a returning maze, and as you saw in our presentation this evening, every single returning maze has something new about it. There's something that, as a fan, you come back, you'll be able to... Uh, 
see and and say, oh, that's new and that's exciting. And uh, so Trick or Treat has uh, a couple of new scenes that we actually go out into the witch's uh, backyard at one point and into a new greenhouse. And, and of course, the biggest thing is that the lights are off and that you're handed a flashlight that we're controlling. And that aspect of it is terrifying. Uh, it's uh, it, it, it's uh, such a, a simple concept, but you just can't believe how intense it gets and right out of the gate. So, Dark Ride. Uh, a lot, I think there's a lot of exciting uh, points to this. Uh, the first one, I think it's a cool cool opportunity to show clowns in the light they haven't been shown at knots ever, which is they don't they don't laugh. They're they're not uh, bright colors. It's very a very dark and dingy thing. And now. It came up when I was doing um, some research and I came across a blog that was highlighting different abandoned theme parks and different uh, abandoned rides and thought, oh, oh, okay, that could be a cool setting, you know? And so the, the whole idea is all these uh, freaks and carnies and clowns were kicked out of the carnival being shunned by society. They have returned and now have created their own world inside of this, this dark ride. Um, and uh, another neat thing about it, you're actually going to walk down the tracks of the ride. Um, and we took that opportunity to create these really uh, theatrical type sets, bright lights, all the stuff, and then you're going to step off into the, the backstage portions of, the, of this ride, and that's when things become more hyper real and a lot dingier and, and kind of gross, and I think it's just going to be a fun uh, mix of those two different approaches to design. The Hollows is uh, tied in with um, Peter Pumpkin Eater, and uh, Dark Ride is tied in with Carnival. Dark Ride is all about clowns returning to a dark ride, and Peter, uh, or sorry, Pumpkin Eater is all about you know this integration in this woods, this kind of sleepy hollows feel where all these trees are overgrown and um, pumpkin patches. It's a very classic um, Halloween feel, and we thought it would be perfect to integrate it. One of the characters, Peter Pumpkin Eater, is going to go and be a, a, a monster in the hollows. Uh, the the one thing that's really cool about the Hollows is it is actually a much more integrated uh, scare zone than we've ever done before. They're going to have scenes that they're going to play out. It's all going to accumulate to a certain like show that you have to find on your own. It's like a big Easter egg. So, but you can kind of follow these characters as they go through the zone. It's extremely exciting. And I wanted to kind of bring that in also with this new maze and kind of have it be sort of like the portal to the maze. So the, 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 the fictitious ride uh, is called Castle of Chaos and it's a typical spooky ride going through the cemetery and into this castle, into the dungeons and um, being at Knott's Berry Farm, um, one thing you'll see at our park a lot is we recycle a lot of things. So you'll see old props from past mazes and rides pop up and uh, we're definitely, um, we didn't have to buy too much this year, let's just put it that way. What we're trying to do with Red Barn this year is we're trying to, like I said, put you right in a, the middle of a horror movie. So what we're doing is we've incorporated a couple of scenic moments where, yeah, there are obstacles to your way. Uh, I wanted to set it up so instead of just there's this army of who knows who trying to get you, there's one focused main bad guy that you have to look out for. So that's uh, the gray man, the old man of the barn, who's basically the patriarch of the family. He's got his number one son, his name's the hog, he's got his trusty chainsaw, and he's definitely the guy that you should look out for. So we take you right away, and we introduce you to these characters at the start of the maze. We let you know that we're in control, and uh, you better run, basically. You know, it's just like, we're going to give you a head start, but when we want to get you, we're going to get you. I think we've really raised the level of quality. The quality in these mazes are incredible. Um, Pumpkin Eater has a big challenge because most of it is organic. Most of it is set with vines, pumpkins, uh, inside of uh, a vine, a uh, thorn cave. It, it's all very um, textural and organic. So that's a lot harder to design than straight walls and, and uh, scenery. But we really brought out uh, a very talented group of uh, production uh, people, and they, they really did a bang up job. Uh, like, 75% of the maze is already up, and it is stunning. 
I just I just want people to, to come and, and have fun and, and enjoy time with their friends and and just be able to enjoy the season. That's that's all I care to get out of this really. I think what they're going to find this year is they're going to find a commitment to strengthening everything we have. It's just a matter of we're looking at everything across the board. As Ken said before, we're really trying to make the entire park the attraction. So what we're doing is we're looking at everything we have and we're not resting on our laurels everywhere. We're trying to bring everything up, bring the level of quality up across the board and really make everybody feel like every single thing they experience is a quality experience and just commitment to detail, commitment to excellence across the board just bring out the best. I hope they get excited by the new direction we're going in. I hope they get excited by the level of detail that they'll find in the mazes, uh, the quality of the shows, and uh, I hope they keep coming back because I, I the, the, the hope is that we're going to deliver on the promise that when you come it will be new and different each time.